Hello again. I'm David Pixley, the muzzle from the Muzzle Mastering. And today I've been doing some experiments with um, ULaw from Air Windows and Dither. And um, starting to make a little bit of progress. Uh, the idea that I had was to make layers of Dither noise. Um, some with you law and some without, some with other effects going on and some without, and to make a bunch of channels <coughs> of different crazy dither and non dither noise. Um, uh, there is a track underneath it, but I want to make it so you can't hear the track at all, just some textures with the dither noise. And then I wanted to use expansion and um, some gating and some transient shapers in order to make um, fast peak transient material from the dither noise and then to shape that into um, single hits to make drum kits or to perhaps um, grab chunks of it and um, put it into some step sequencer type of things. Um, but um, turns out I might not even need to use the um, expansion and all that on some of this stuff because I found a good one and I rendered it earlier and it's leading into some more good ones. I'm on Twitch and YouTube, and I will periodically check my um, will periodically check for comments. Um, I just gotta let my friends know real fast that I am streaming. A couple of my friends might tune in. We have a group chat. Pixelgasm dudes. And uh, the track that I'm using for this experiment is one from Infinati. Um, and he is a member of Pixelgasm. Uh, Pixelgasm is a collaborative group that we have that has uh, been fairly inactive ish. Um, lately, uh, we do have some big time production possibly on the way that has been um, there's one track that we have been working on for kind of got put on pause but started over a year ago and um, just been waiting on possibly getting two vocalists that I had in mind um, namely Esson Hamilton and uh, Calypso out of Las Vegas um, I already got one really good rapper on it. He did one, uh, he did two verses and they were, they blew me away. And um, I'm just hoping to get these other two on there. I have a vision for it. But anyway, um, let me just a couple of these. My, Added more to the group. So uh, this track, I think um, he's going to end up sending me the stems for, and I'm going to do a remix. It might end up being Pixelgasm, or it might end up just being the Muzzle remix of his track. And um, I'm eventually going to master his track for him. So so far, what I got going on is did a little bit of processing with the track. Um, 
was fairly quiet and so I turned it up. I did that. But I think what I'm going to end up doing is turning it down um, before it hits the dither. Uh, I already turned it down a lot. Um, by the way, you can turn things up and down with bit shift gain without losing any quality. And I'm pretty sure that it keeps the noise floor the same. So you could record at like minus 72 dB and then turn it up so that that track is hitting minus 6 dB and sounds great. Um, oh, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll get hit with the copyright flag for YouTube. You have to say bit shift gain, but it's technically all one word, bit shift gain, bit. If you say bit and shift really quickly, then they think you're saying something else that first word and they flag you and they take down your uh, <laughs> video so anyway so I just hit it with base kit um, I put max bass on it just because I'm using headphones and I wanted to hear the subs a bit I'm gonna turn that up just because you know after after I'm, if I'm actually going to, you know, use this, then probably before I render each time, I would turn this like way down to like there. I like to use max bass when I'm doing mastering, but just barely, even sometimes down here, just so it's like gives you a little tiny hint of fake bass that represents the subs. Uh, that's when I'm doing mastering for multiple platforms for multiple um, stereo systems like you know if you want to hear it well on laptop headphones or phone then this is your best friend but if you want to play it on high quality PA speakers then get rid of that max space but um, a lot of the times since I'm doing mastering for like multiple platforms then I try to slip it in but I try to make it so that that same mastering could still work on loud PA speakers. Anyway, enough about mastering. Um, that's what I got going on there. And then this was a little experiment that I had going on with ULaw. I didn't end up using this for this. Uh, I will eventually. I'm probably going to eventually stick um, Blue Cat's patchwork on and do things in parallel. Um, but for now, this is working out. Um, I'd want to get a whole bunch of layers of dither noise, and then I want to have a whole bunch of channels of it, and then sum it up with Air Windows. Um, probably the purest console and I might build like a whole bunch of different aux channels so it's summed up with purest channel and console on like some of the aux channels and have return aux channels into groups and sum those up with um, one of his other console plug-in systems uh, those are awesome I haven't learned them yet but that is a goal uh, so here we are. I found a setting that I rendered. Um, basically, we have bit shift gain, turning it down 16 bits. That is, let me see, 96 dB. So it turned it down 96 dB. I turned it down another 96 dB. And then this ULaw encode. I think it slams it up by like 80 dB or something into the the encode and decode system. I don't understand it completely. It's it's really weird. Um, it's always going to act differently. And then that goes into bit shift gain, turning it down more inside of it. And if this was outside of it, if it was before it, it would sound totally different. Um, and that goes into dither box. These are all air windows, by the way. 
Um, and I put it on truncation 16 bit. Sounds so bad. So bad that it's good into my ears. And then I turned it back up. And then I decoded it. And then turned it up 11 bits. So I'm going to play it for you. And then I had um, some other things that I was leading into that I'll go into. And uh, but I do warn you, you don't want to turn up your speakers. Um, I do have this padded on the output a little bit, but before when I streamed it was too quiet, and someone told me that it was too quiet. So um, let's go with this. I'm gonna play it now. I padded it a little bit more for you. Actually, I'm not sure if that's too loud or not. But that's what I got. There's like a couple little spots that I thought sounded really nice. Um, like that one. Now bear in mind that I'm not going to be keeping all of this. I'm going to grab like little chunks of it. That high pitched thing was awesome. That works awesome right there. I challenge anybody to name one plugin or or um, number of plugins that can make a sound like this. Chances are maybe you can find one, but wait till you hear what else it can do.
Alright, so now that you've heard that, I'm going to try the decode before the encode. I'll turn. Oh, excuse me. Try this one. Nothing. Very interesting. Well, before I start experimenting with that, um, I had. Some neat stuff going on where I added. What was it? Another bit ship. Oh, wait, yeah, I think it was. Might have been this. There we go. So now this, this is what I'm talking about right here. Oh, and bear in mind, this is with truncation 16-bit. And it's being turned down, like way down, before it hits it. Um, see right there. Needs to go down further. So I'm going to render it minus 16, minus 15, and at minus 13, because in the quieter chunks it sounded better at minus 13. So I'm going to go ahead and save here. Probably anybody who listens to this is going to be like, um, that sounds so bad. So I'm going to save this. So I rendered this test, um, so I'm going to render a bunch of them and then sum them up with the um, Curious Console, and I might run more stuff with ULaw. So then there was this other thing that I did, um, Phase Nudge and DRes, I think. Check this out.
crowd is so good. Obviously, I'm, I'm straying from the goal, uh, which is to use dither. Um, kind of can't help myself because everything is so fun. What happened there? Stop. Oh. That's muted, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where that audio is coming from because it's not playing in the Reaper. I can still hear it when I mute it in OBS. I have no idea what just happened. Okay, now it stopped. Wow, that was weird. Now I'll turn D-Res off. <laughs> Seemed to do some, it might have been my CPU hanging up or something. <coughs> but it was playing the sound. <clears throat> after it was stopping. Oh, that was like a trail, um, like what a reverb would do, seems like. It had to be what that was. No, because there was no signal on the master channel, so... I was just acting weird, which I would expect. From uh -huh. Oh, whoa, I just realized. Looking at OBS, you can't see my, you can't see the effect window. That's not good. Hmm. I wonder if my previous stream had that <coughs> happening. Let me try it. Closing Reaper, save this. Oh, it's because I was doing window capture in OBS instead of display capture. Well, that sucks. Guess I'll go back to display capture and then hope that my CPU doesn't matter. Let's see what it's doing now. Looks like it should be okay. Um, oh, I forgot to look at comments.
I see that Spacey Blur and Infinati are tuned in on Twitch. Spacey says, so bad it's good. Infinati says, I like it. I was just listening to thinking of making Speedcore. Speedcore is one of my biggest um, influences. Uh, actually, um, Shocker TV and Peak Indicator 2012 were doing that back in the day. Uh, we had a group called um, uh, Interrupt Program, and um, we played shows in Vegas. And it was a mixture of all kinds of different stuff, but speed core, break core, um, grind core, um, 8-bit or chip tune and um, <clears throat> emo core and metal core and <clears throat> reggae and and noise <clears throat> uh, let me see. G Jones I don't know who G Jones is who's that <laughs> Infinati says ear sex. <coughs> I think Spacey Blur might be at um, <coughs> going to Bunkhouse tonight. <coughs> and he might possibly stream their show. So, uh, anyway, shout out to um, Sergio's imaginary girlfriend and uh, Spacey Blur and shout out to Chris J from Air Windows for all of these awesome free plugins with no strings attached no install file no malware bioware no viruses no advertising in your ear and uh, he's supported on Patreon that's the only way he's able to keep on doing this um, Puts out three plugins per month and he updates them frequently or whenever needed. <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, he just updated several hundred plugins with a new Dither Float. This it um, Dither Float to 64 bit, and that's super clean. <clears throat> you can't hear that. No way. But anyway, um, Oh, and shout out to Tom Green. If anybody watches Big Brother, you should vote for Tom Green for America's Favorite. He deserves it. Because his bum is on the rail. My bum is on the couch. The Big Brother couch. The coach. My bum is on the couch. The Big Brother coach. My bum is on the house. My bum is on the house. My bum is on the household. Household. My bum is on the Canadian. Canadian. Coffee. My bum is on the grapes. Grapes. So yeah, I was thinking about doing a remix of a bum bum song with uh, footage from Tom Green in the Big Brother house, but they would hit me with copyright infringement, of course, but I was going to try to send it to Tom Green privately because I believe he is allowed to post that stuff. Actually, yeah, he is because he's been posting it on his Twitter, and um, he's always been one of my biggest inspirations because he's a real strange, kind of weird comedy entertainer um, when his show came out on MTV was instantly my favorite show on TV and he inspired me to be a weirdo with my audio believe it or not some of it part of it is that it's so bad that it's like a joke but it's also with the goal in mind of making things bad to the point of they're good. And then also, I just love the sound of badness for some reason. Anyway, so yeah, shout out to Tom Green. 
My bum is on the household. My bum is on the block, the big brother block. Oh, Interrupt Program, Spacey Blur asks, what year was Interrupt Program? It was in 2009 to 2011. I think it kind of broke down before 2012. Um, and then me and Uncle John and uh, Reed Cowan from Peak Indicator started a group called Rat Trap 3000 and we never played a show, but we had some good material. Um, Reed was never going to be ready to play a show because we were all running into his Ableton and he was running sound and he was also making his own sounds and he was doing like the work of three people and he was always turning me down. <laughs> Go figure. So, let's see. Oh, Infinati repeated that Air Windows information. Oh, he says Google was listening. That's funny. So, Chris J. actually, about nine months ago, he actually. Started paying Google ads ten dollars per month, um, so that they would not ban him from YouTube. Um, and so he pays ten dollars not to advertise himself, but like there's related ads on the beginning of some of his videos. So sometimes you have to click skip, you know, the five seconds. And he said that if he didn't buy into it and look like he was buying into their system at least to a certain point that they would shut him down and um, thanks to that ten dollars I found him by searching best dither 2019 about nine months ago eight months ago something like that and I was so shocked when it was like 10 times better than Isotope, Ozone, Mbit Plus, Dither, which is also very good, but not just another Dither, it was like 10 times better at least. And then two weeks ago, he updated it and made it better. So it's like he's already 10 times better than the best $300 bundle. And then he goes and updates it and makes it another like at least twice as good maybe I don't know any company that does that just to it's like I found a way of making this better I'll put in the 80 hours the like came had to have worked like a hundred hours that week that he updated every single one of his plugins with dither float so shout out to Chris J from air windows and Infinati for the song oh I will go ahead and play this song without effects just so you guys can hear that it doesn't always sound shitty just when I just when I process it. And this has some um some plugins on this. I'll play it clean first. I think that's too quiet. Hold on. Turn off dither flow. Oh, that was on. Oopsie. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why it's so dang quiet. Almost like that bitch shift gain is not even working. Oh. Yeah. Ugh. 
this base kit is dope. Check it out inside of Eula. Watch this. Looks like I'm hitting the output a little too hot. Let me turn it down for you guys. Um, let me know if it's too quiet or too loud. Um, I'm just going to turn this um, bit shift gain down so it's down 6 dB one bit. Is that too quiet? Oh crap, the um they can only see my webcam, damn it. Okay, display capture. Thank you, Infinati. So I'm gonna save this. I'll close that. And I think I have to add a new display capture. I'm going to remove the cat. New display capture. I don't know why it did that. Uh, it looks like I might have to restart OBS, but I do know a way around this slightly. And it involves a window capture, so we'll do that. Um. But then the issue with that was you couldn't see my plugin window, just the re but yeah, so I'll just 
make it see the window. So there's a Reaper. You can see Reaper, but you can't see my plugin window. Um, I wonder if I can add another window capture. It might drive the CPU up. So let's see here. Reaper. So yeah, I have to restart OBS, um, otherwise you won't see my effects. Well, let's see what happens if I bring it out with its own window. Well, it's funny, you see my mouse moving around, but not what I'm clicking on. Then if I go to Window Capture 2... Wonder what Windows screen lock or Windows lock screen is. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to restart OBS. I have no idea why it did that. Let me turn off this. This. Oh, what happened? Well, that's the window cap. They've removed the play cap. Okay. I wonder if I do this. Now you can see that monitor. I just like this. Kind of screws up my workflow a little bit, but now you can see it. So yeah, I don't. I guess I don't have to restart for a minute. This will look at my neck pointing in a different direction anyway. So what was I doing? Oh, it was base kit inside of U Law. Oh, and D Res. This is awesome. Watch this. It totally sounds like, um, it sounds like, um, Frostwave Sonic Alienator, which no other plugin or pedal or rack unit would sound like it. And this sounds actually better. And then check it out with, without you law It's totally not as good. Watch. So that's just it by itself, like, so cool. That's Bit Crusher and a Frequency Crusher. And it's nice, but then with this Hula, Whoa! 
kind of want to just render that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. Save as. stuff like spiral the so spiral is a distortion uh, based on um, and I can say whatever else I want not the Fibonacci sequence um, but it's uh, actually based on a real spiral um, not the not the Fibonacci so spiral. On that shit right now, right now, right now, right now, right I thought it was the Fibonacci, right now, but it's not. Um, but so this will this will cause a liasing if I say whatever else I want. If it's in dry. Wow, that's mean. Now check it out without. So this is just spiral right here, and that's without, with, you can turn it down the output a little, and then, big presence is the base. Shift gain acts like the opposite of what I expected it to inside of U Law. Watch when I turn U Law off. And this is if I bit shift gain is lowering it by 36 dB and then it's raising it by 36 dB. So then it's hitting spiral less on the input. Let me go ahead and the beat on that shit right now. It makes it like snow.
just saving some of these because um, Chris J from Air Windows interacts with um, the community and so he talks to me about stuff and I just want to tell him like, hey check it out. Bit shift gain is driving it to the left. Eager, that's so weird. I would not have in a thousand years like thought it would be there, but he'll probably he'll probably know why. And then like one one bit away, boom, back to both ears. Let's see what happens if we add an additional one with one bit going. Okay, so is that the same as... That's... Is this... Yeah. Sometimes you have to hit stop because something will destroy it and then it won't get undestroyed. And sometimes you have to turn things off. So he came out with a couple releases um, recently, and I want to try them out. Um, oh, you know what? Drive will be neat. 
What would DS will do actually? And oh, thank you, honey. So many great plugins, uh, but you got to be careful with some of them. Like, for example, DC voltage. Um, that will blow your speakers real fast and or your ears might cause your computer to just catch on fire um, oh path nutty that is one that came out two weeks ago then what was the other one? Oh, it was called Holt. Oh, you can't see my screen again. That is whack. So... <laughs> Let's see what happens when I change it back to Capture One. Oh, no, I have to restart OBS. All right, I will be right back. Unless I can figure out how to fix this, but i um, guessing Spacey Blur would have an idea or two, but I don't want to waste time troubleshooting. I'll just be right back.